I can't see any fish moving, but I'm pretty sure they're there. The whole lake is a great spot. Yeah, I mean, look at it. It's fabulous. Like, it's always nice to catch fish, and that's what I'm trying to do, but it's just nice being here. And, and fly fishing is sort of, it's, it's gentle and peaceful, so it fits with the peace and tranquility of the environment. Lake Onslow, in your storage capacity, will be equivalent to all the other hydro lakes added together. It's like a, a Benmore Dam and a Lake Manapuri scheme all put into one. It's an insurance policy. It's the way the market should insure against shortage of hydro power in a dry year. Could easily be a white elephant in 10 years' time. Easily. Lake Onslow originally was just a, a swamp called Dismal Swamp. It was dammed the first time for mining and then irrigation and it's still used as a good source of irrigation for the Tiviet Valley. It also was raised again the second time for power generation. Yeah, it's, it's forever changing out there you could say, but it, uh, it will change spectacularly this time. I got the idea for pump storage many years ago when I was at the shores of Lake Hawea on a field trip and it was mentioned at the time that the lake was being run like a bathtub. It occurred to me that there might be some other means by which we could store water and take at least some of the pressure off the existing hydro lakes. And so it was some years later when I was scanning the topography and it occurred to me that the Onslow Basin had the capacity to store a large amount of energy. At the time, uh, climate change wasn't even talked about. But the climate change imperative and the need to shift towards um, renewable electricity become more and more important. The biggest visual effect that you will see of Onslow, there'll be two aspects. One will be a, a large dam near the present dam of Lake Onslow. The dam will be of similar magnitude to the Benmore Dam. It'll be an earth dam. And of course, there'll be a much larger lake. But the real work is done underground. There will be a large tunnel linking probably the, the Clutha River um, through to the, the lake. And there'll be an underground power station rather similar to the Manapuri power station, except Manapuri only generates, whereas Onslow will both pump and generate depending on the economic situation. The reason I am supporting Onslow is because we do need something to cover our hydro. Our hydro is a fantastic asset. I mean, it's 65% of our energy supply for the country, but it has this variability from season to season. And it's not like wind, where wind might be blowing today and not blowing tomorrow. Hydro, when it goes dry, it goes dry for three or four months. Something like Onslow provides the opportunity to fill up when there's lots of energy, so when it's wet or when it's blowing, and to produce energy when it's dry or when it's not blowing. Well, the concept of, of Oslo is essentially to provide power through a dry year, particularly in the absence of fossil fuels. So the government policy is to shift away from fossil fuel electricity generation and rely perhaps on Oslo instead. Coal has served us well to cover that hydro variability. Ultimately though, it's not because we're going to 100% renewables but that Huntley power station is going to wear out. If Huntley failed tomorrow, this country would be in deep trouble over reliability of energy. And our modern societies are entirely built around readily available electricity. So this is about protecting the security of supply, which is the uppermost priority of just about every consumer. Now, the amount of water involved is not that great. So when we're generating, we're not going to be flooding the Clutha River, and likewise we're not going to be drying it up when we're pumping, because the energy comes from the height difference. It's not a massive, huge area, but it's because of its elevation that it's got a lot of energy. Lake Onslow energy storage capacity will be equivalent to all the other hydro lakes added together. So in other words, we're more than doubling New Zealand's total energy storage capacity. 
Lake Onslow is perceived to be a um, good site for a battery project because it's one of the very few basins high in the hills at altitude that is capable of storing enough water. I'm Raymond Gunn. Uh, I've been farming in this valley all my life. I'm the chairperson of the Tibet Valley Community Board. My role in the technical reference group for the New Zealand Battery Project is to represent the community's interests and the farming interests in the valley. I'm the fifth generation actually on this block of land here. Those generations that have come through living in this valley have seen a lot of different changes. But this one will be very big. I don't think um, people realise the scale of this project. It'd be huge, it'd be one of massive inf infrastructure for New Zealand. Some people would say it's good, and some people would probably like the valley the way it is. The trouble with this sort of growth, it's so big and so quick that it can be a bit overwhelming for some people, even for the schools and all that sort of thing. There's, there's a lot to think about. The farmers bordering Lake Onslow, they will be quite unsettled at the moment. If the project goes ahead, they could lose large parts of their farm that it will really upset the balance of their properties. So they will be feeling quite unsettled at the moment, and I feel for them. Kia ora, my name is uh, Guy Waipara. I am uh, the General Manager of Development at uh, Meridian Energy. I've spent over 30 years in the electricity sector. I think we do need energy storage. What energy storage is the right storage is a, a better question. I personally don't think a large-scale hydro scheme is the silver bullet answer for New Zealand storage. Because it's expensive, because it's long dated, because it's got a lot of risk and cost and delivery. The Lake Onslow project it feels like something that would have been dreamed up in the 80s. as a real big scale project, a nation building thing that we can all get in behind. But diversity of options and choices still feels like a, a better way for this country to go. And you never know where technology is going to take you over time. And to have the ability to kind of move and adjust as things, as economics change, I think it's hugely valuable rather than kind of setting in stone, this is what we're going to do. And by the time you get there, you might find that you've built yourself a white elephant when there's all these other options that are actually far better for the country as a whole. There is no incentive for the gen tailors to invest in a plant like this. And it does bring a new discipline to the market, which may not be in their commercial interest. And ultimately, they are there to make money for their shareholders. So I don't see them as being at all enthusiastic about a, a project like Onslow. If you spend time with the electricity companies and the people that, that work in them, there's a real sense of doing what's right for the country. So I don't, I don't agree that we've got kind of an, an opposed interest to what's right for this country at all. I think that's, um, I think that's rubbish. It's a still water fishery, so to some degree you get to sort of hunt for the fish. The scenery is just fabulous, and if you wanted a fish to eat, fish from the lakes, these high country lakes um, are really good. The water's nice and clean, um, and they're generally really nice, um, a really nice rich orange flesh because of the crustaceans that they eat. One of the big things that really attracts anglers at a certain time of the year is the cicada hatch and if you arrive here when there's a good cicada hatch on and the fish are sort of tuned into them the fishing you know out of this world it's predominantly fishermen who come here um, but I'd, i'm sure there's lots of other people with different interests that appreciate the same values that uh, uh, you do as an angler in terms of the scenery and the tranquility and you can still drink water from the lake <laughs> The downsides of a project like Onslow would be the loss of recreational area in the basin. It's a quite a pristine sort of a place. It's um, got good fishing there now. If the dam was built to a full height or even close to full height, all the huts will have to go. Some farmers will just about lose all their complete block of land that they have out there. Um, some will lose large portions of it, so it would be quite significant. In theory, it is doable. In practice, it might become too expensive. I, I don't know. That's why there's a lot of geotech work to be done. 
the government would like to be carbon neutral by about 2030. Well, to have something like this scale up and running by then would be a big ask. You know, I've done some costings on this. It keeps coming in around four billion. And actually four billion's got a pretty big margin in it, in my view. But it depends a lot on the geology, um, the conditions under which we have to tunnel, and the conditions under which the dam foundations uh, are made. The great thing about Onslow is it can store a very large amount of energy. You can't store 5,000 gigawatt hours for 10 years in an electrical battery. You know, the cost of lithium to do this is trillions of dollars, not billions. None of us know the future. So if we look to wind, you know, wind was really expensive 10 years ago, and now, you know, the cost of that's dropped dramatically. When I first joined Meridian, there was no way solar power was going to make any sense in New Zealand. Now we've got a whole bunch of companies looking at solar power. All of these options and choices, they, they present themselves in different ways and at different times than you would have ever dreamed of at some point in the past. So I think committing everything to kind of one option, it, it, there's just so much risk in that just not being the right choice. It's good for pretty much everybody. We've had periods in the last couple of years of very high prices of electricity, and that's not good for New Zealand industry who rely a lot on electricity supply. What will tend to happen is that when the lakes are low and the prices start to rise, Onslow will generate, and that will in effect move the prices um, away from the high levels back towards more, more lower levels. So the volatility in the market, certainly on the seasonal level, will be taken away. My personal belief is, is Onslow won't get built, but I think we'll also start to demonstrate maybe the next five to 10 years that there are other real examples of things that can do that job. And I think we'll kind of build our way towards that future in a way that no one might have planned exactly, but it'll make sense at the time. I'm simply a passionate New Zealander. And, you know, I've had 50 years in the electricity sector and I see a big problem coming. I think if we don't do something soon, the country will be in deep trouble. Some days I think it's 50-50, some days I think it's higher, but I think we can't keep importing coal to burn the quantities that we are. There's an environmental cost no matter what you do, but if you're wanting green energy, it's inevitable. You can leave these areas the way they are and keep burning coal. But if you don't want to do that, you've got to look at sacrificing some things for green energy. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald. Click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here and head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.